Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Well, we're back to the whiteboard today to discuss the Poisson process paradox. Why Bitcoin transactions often feel like they take so long to be included in the next block whenever you're waiting, when in theory we know the average block time is 10 minutes, and therefore average wait time should be a lot less than that. So I'm gonna walk you through the maths behind this. I found this really interesting when I was engaged in a Twitter conversation yesterday, and I certainly learned a lot, so I hope you guys find it interesting as well. Let's walk through what is on this chart here to begin with. So the first graph we have, the number of transactions that are waiting to be included in the next block. And we're gonna assume that around 100 transactions per minute are broadcast into the Bitcoin network, and those miners are competing to solve that equation uh, to win that next block and include all those transactions and add it to the blockchain. So in a perfect world, if the first block takes exactly 10 minutes to mine, we've got those 100 transactions per minute creeping into the network, uh, and then at that 10 minute mark, we've had exactly 1,000 transactions that are included in the next block. So the block time was 10 minutes and no person waited longer than 10 minutes to be included. And we had a lot that were a lot less than that because these people let's say the nine minute mark only had to wait one minute. So the average time waited is halfway there at an average wait time of five minutes, assuming those transactions are constant in this example. So how does it feel like it's always longer than that in the real world? And we're gonna get into probabilities and distributions. So let's have a look at the probability of a block time. And we know that every block is gonna take at least one second. So we can say 100% of blocks take longer than zero minutes to mine. And then the longer a block takes to mine, the lower the probability. So we do have blocks that take 50 minutes occasionally, but the chances of that might be you know, 1%. So that's all that first chart over there is expressing. The next chart uh, shows that as a distribution. So if you've ever seen a standard distribution curve, uh, it's nice and symmetrical, but because we can't have any blocks that are shorter than zero, we can't have negative numbers, uh, this is slightly skewed, so it doesn't have the tail out to the left like a normal standard distribution. We have this tail uh, out to the right because we can have blocks that take longer like we just spoke about. But the average still works out to be 10 minutes as that block time. We see the majority are sort of clustered around that 10 minute mark, uh, the probability of a, a block time there. So let's have a look at a few more real world examples. The chart goes for an hour here, 60 minutes. So let's get in uh, 60 uh, six blocks during that time. So let's let's assume the next block uh, takes 19 minutes. And then the average wait time for those people is gonna be right in the middle of that 19 minute mark at 9.5 minutes. We then have a really short little block there, one minute long, uh, to bring the average back to 10 minutes. So those people had to wait an average of half a minute. We then have a really long block, one of those outliers. Let's say that we had a 28 minute long block. And then to finish off, we're gonna have two more one minute blocks to bring that average back to uh, 10 minutes with six blocks in the hour. So the average wait time for those 28 minute block uh, participants was 14 minutes. So when we add these up uh, and divide them by six, we know that the average block time was 10 minutes. So why does the average wait time feel a lot longer in real life? And this is where it gets into these uh, Poisson processes and how the paradox plays out. So when we look at the number of transactions that were actually included in those blocks, we know that it's increasing at 100 transactions a minute. So after 19 minutes, we had 1900 transactions in that block. We then had 100 transactions in a one minute block and then 2,800 transactions in that 28 minute block, uh, followed by those two one minute little transactions there. So when we look at the number of transactions times the average minutes that they waited, let's call this um, transaction minutes waited, 5,000 for the first block, uh, 1,850 off my cheat sheet there for the second block, we then have uh, 50, for the smaller blocks, I won't write those far too in. And then we've got 39,200 transaction minutes weighted total. So when we add those all together and divide by the time period, the average number we actually get is the average wait time is 10.4 minutes. 
Now, if we continue to do this over time, just like flip, flipping a coin with no memory, it's always gonna end up being about 50%, but it doesn't matter what happened you know, before, it doesn't determine what happens next. So that number is gonna to continue to narrow towards an average wait time of 10 minutes because of these probabilities. So when you went out and asked all the participants that sent transactions during this time, all 6,000 transactions, if you went out and asked them, well, how long did you have to wait? What we would find is that only 5% of people got included in these short blocks. Then we have 17% uh, of people in the 10 minute block, 31% of people in the 19 minute block, and 47% of people in the 28 minute block. So you can begin to see how the larger blocks end up having more people, more transactions in them. So you generally fall in those regions when you send a Bitcoin transaction. The laws of mathematics and probability will say that you actually, unfortunately, end up waiting during these longer periods of time. So I hope you guys have found the Poisson process paradox interesting. Please hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, share these videos around, and thanks for tuning in, guys.